for your standardization and specification lab, you're going to do the process of titration. So when we do titration, the titration technique, we want to determine the concentration of an unknown. Let's say you don't know the concentration of an acid and you want to determine that concentration, you can actually determine that from a known concentration of a base. So basically, titration is an acid-base reaction that will result in salt and water. And if you notice here, acid plus base gives you salt and water. So you probably were introduced to that when you um, did your, th that particular topic in class. Now, how is titration applicable? For example, you're cooking and you look at your vinegar and you notice that the vinegar has acetic acid in it. Acetic acid is, as its name suggests, an acid. And it says it has 5% acetic acid. So if you want to determine, does my vinegar really have 5% acetic acid, then you can determine that by, using a, by, by actually titrating your vinegar against a known concentration of a base. Let's say in this case, your base could be sodium hydroxide. So the, you're going to be doing things like that in your lab. You'll be given some unknown everyday um, substances to determine the quantity of a particular acid in that sample based on the known concentra concentration of a base. So before we can do titration, we need to make sure that the base that we're working with is um, we have the correct concentration of that base. So before, in order for us to do that, we have to do what is called standardization. So you're standardizing your base. And in this case, the base we're using is sodium hydroxide. So that means you're going to be given a known concentration of sodium hydroxide, but you have to first determine if this concentration that you're given is the actual concentration. So in that case, in order for you to standardize your sodium hydroxide, you have to titrate it against a known concentration of an acid. In this case, the acid is called potassium hydrogen salate. That is the acid we're going to use. So this is potassium hydrogen salate, that's the reaction, plus sodium hydroxide gives you your salt and your water. Okay? And the important thing to make note of here is the relationship between your reactants and your products because that will help you to determine the concentration of your base in this case, which is sodium hydroxide. So if you look at your, let me just erase this. If you look at the equation right here, if you notice the relationship between potassium hydrogen salate and sodium hydroxide, the ratio here is a one-to-one -one relationship. So there's a one-to-one -one ratio of potassium hydrogen salate reacting with um, sodium hydroxide to give you the salt and the water. So if we, you're going to be required to calculate the moles of the substance that you're going to be using because that's the way how you're going to in the long run determine your concentration. So if you have a one-to-one -one ratio of potassium um, hydrogen salate to sodium hydroxide, if you are reacting one mole of potassium hydrogen salate, that means you will react this one mole to one mole of sodium hydroxide. And therefore, that will give you one mole of the salt, one mole of water. So I want you to bear in mind this relationship because we're going to use it at the end when we're calculating our results and determining the concentration of our standardized solution. So I'm going to briefly show you as a start to your lab, show you how you actually standardize your base against a known acid.